Was indeed. So with this analysis, let's join in Michael Frazis. He's uh, from Frazis Capital. He joins us live here in the studio. Well, this is uh, you'll be looking for the vaccine for a little while, and uh, it looks like we've finally got that silver bullet to go and solve the ills that we've been uh, battling this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's a very exciting day uh, for life sciences and markets. You know, this is a mRNA vaccine. So there's always a huge question mark over whether what these would work. You know, not a single one had been um, approved for use before. Uh, and this is the first example of that. Can you give us an example? Because you're, you know, a biotech, you know, you're all across mm. your biotechs. We're not in the medical field. But, um, you know, in terms of things like people saying we've never seen a coronavirus vaccine work before, things like SARS, or we've never, um, and also, you know, people are showing immunity within three months, they catch it again, therefore mm. vaccines will be irrelevant. Is this an answer to that? Uh, there's a couple of things there. I mean, there are coronavirus vaccines. They're okay. just using animals. Uh, secondly, there was no intrinsic reason for it not to work. Mm. So the example people use is HIV. And people say, you know, been trying to get a HIV vaccine for decades. Yep. Uh, but we've never been able to. The problem there is the surface of the virus is kind of protected. It's covered. You can't access it. You can't access the spike proteins. Pretty much every major um, vaccine approach is targeting those spike proteins. Right. So there's a good chance if one of them works, they'll all work. And in terms of getting the, um, getting the virus again, you know, that's, it's very isolated cases where that mm. seems to have happened. Um, typically when it happens, it's front page news. It's actually quite rare when you think about it. Uh, so there's a good chance this, uh, virus, this vaccine has a, a lasting effect. You know, and the fact that they've been able to demonstrate it, it works um, bodes really well for all the others as well because they're all targeting the same spike protein in the similar ways. Let's say this is, uh, gets the final uh, tick off when it comes to uh, safety aspects and the like. We start administering it around the world, it uh, gets rolled out. What are the investment implications? We saw a, quite a big rotation out of tech and growth into mm. more cyclical areas overnight. Do you think that move has legs or is this a buying opportunity you know, in, those, in those growth uh, areas? Look, I think this is huge. Like, I think this is clearly the beginning of the end. Yeah. You know, we've got the vaccine. This is the beginning of the end. It's potentially a whole new phase of markets. Um, I think there's two things that are interesting that we're thinking about like in terms of how we're investing. The first is there's a good chance in a year's time travel has the best year they've ever had on record. <laughs> Can you, know? you imagine all the people wanting pent up demand yeah. for travelling? And think about where those stocks are trading now, even yeah. after the pop, they're not trading like that. Like that is not priced in. Um, and they should be having blowout numbers in a year's time. Similarly, some companies like in e-commerce might actually have negative year on year. Mm. You know, those coronavirus beneficiaries. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing is, is you know, the bond market drives so much movements, particularly in these tech stocks that mm. you're talking about. And interest rates are rising. You know, we're kind of got, we're at the end of, I think, three decades, maybe more, of bond yields dropping. I do wonder if this is that one thing after so many years of waiting that yeah. finally tips that trend into yeah. reverse. Can I ask you, because you know you said it benefits all the vac- or a lot of the vaccine mm. uh, makers, you know, Moderna and all these ones as well. Is there room for everyone in the market? How does it work when it comes it's to vaccines? It's an interesting one. Usually you would say if one person, if one company gets something approved, uh, it's very hard to come in after that because yeah. you have to prove firstly that it works and secondly that it's better than the existing treatment. Right. Um, and the existing treatment has the benefit of, you know, all the patients they've already dosed. Yeah. You know, it might already be in the market. There might History, be a lot of people right. tried yeah. it. Yeah. Very hard to catch up on that. You know, you really have to have something that's materially and obviously better. Uh, but in this case, I think there's going to be such a demand for, for vaccines that anybody that can release, you know, data in the next kind of few weeks mm. will probably be at a similar level. Um, and one, you know, I guess somewhat positive aspect of the recent surge in coronavirus cases is that uh, that's a lot of data for these trials. Mm. Um, you know, people expecting these to be much later, but because so many people have, are catching coronavirus, they can end these early. Um, I'm asking this from a, med- from a markets perspective, because obviously we want to see this work, so markets can continue to rally, mm. things can open up. It's good for the human race, obviously. It's good for a lot of reasons. But um, is this a very quick turnaround for a vaccine? Give us the, the history there, just to get us an idea of whether people will actually want to take this vaccine, which we hope everyone does, but... Yeah, I mean, you'd think, so they're talking about 50 million doses. You'd think that there'd be enough people willing to take those first batches. Um, you don't need everybody to take the vaccine, right? Especially if it's 90% effective. Mm. You just need, you know, significant numbers of people to do it. Uh, it's also something in the psyche, you know, it might change the politics. Yeah. It might change the policy responses. You know, the fact that you can insist on people getting a vaccine if they want to travel, yeah. if they want to do certain things, that might actually resolve some of these economic issues mm. that we're having. Um, so even if there's a lot of people that don't want to take the vaccine, this is still huge. So your strategy chain changing now or you're already sort of on this path? Uh, we are making moves. We are changing. We want to make sure you got to, you got to look ahead, right? Yep. Um, so you want to be this time next year, you want to be in companies that are performing well over the next 12 months. 
Uh, and we always think that way. So we will be making changes. All right, well, come talk to us when you, when you do, because we want to hear all the, all, the, all the news. And we really appreciate you coming in. Thanks so much. Take us through it. Thanks for joining us on the show.